Now, Boris Johnson's plans to lift the six-hour cap on Sunday trading laws could be in trouble amid warnings that at least 50 Conservative MPs will vote against them. Ministers are considering relaxing the rules so people can shop for longer in order to help retailers return following the coronavirus lockdown. But the PM was told in a letter that over 50 Conservative MPs are opposed to the plans. Let's speak to one of them. Bob Blackman, Conservative MP, is with us now. Afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. Um, what's wrong with extending hours on a Sunday? Well, I think we, there, are, there are several things. One is that we've got a very satisfactory good old British compromise uh, that allows the law, and bear in mind we're talking about the larger stores. We're not talking about the, the average high street shop here. We're talking about the larger stores um, that were allowed, obviously, to open for six hours on a Sunday. Um, at the moment, uh, there, are, there are several aspects to this. First is that our, our smaller shops are hanging on by their fingernails. And if we allow the larger st shops to open for extended hours on a Sunday and basically go to seven-day-a-week shopping, yeah. then it will be the death knell of our smaller shops. I mean, there's no question whatsoever about the economics of this. We know that that's what happened. For example, when this was tried during the Olympics, it had a dramatic effect on smaller shops. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is that shop workers in particular in these larger stores value the fact that they can spend time with their families on a Sunday um, and I think they should be able to do so. The, one of the risks here will be that the owners of, of larger stores will say, well, your contract of employment is such that you're going to work so many hours per week and um, Sundays will just be a normal way of, of, of mm -hmm. working, which is very bad news for the family. Um, the, the third aspect, I think, is, is one of um, just making sure that uh, we strike this balance between wanting the economy to recover as quickly as possible uh, and, and ensuring that we don't literally shaft the smaller shops on which we've all been depending on during the, um, during the, the lockdown. Sure, um, sure. You know, and I think it's, it's a combination of those factors. That, that lead me to a view of saying, look, the, the, the very last thing we want to do is disturb that compromise. I'm not saying go back to the days when no shops were open on Sundays uh, 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 and that, you know, you, if you, you had an emergency, you were desperate to find someone. I'm not saying to do that, but I think what we have is, is a compromise arrangement that works and we shouldn't disturb that compromise arrangement. And I can say from, you know, the lobbying that has gone on, that there are many colleagues in the House of Commons that share that view, even those that say, well, I'm, I'm actually in favour of a relaxation and people should do what they want to do when they, they, they want to do it in terms of shopping, are saying, look, I'm not going to go along with this because um, this, this potentially is, is too high risk. So it's not a religious issue. This is mostly about business. Well, there are some people, obviously, who take a religious view. Um, uh, and, you know, there are some people that say, I'd like to keep Sunday special. Uh, that should be a day of worship rather than um, uh, of working. Uh, I'm one of those that's, I'm a, my constituency, a very multi-religious uh, community with all religions being celebrated in the constituency. And I know that for, for some of those people, um, you know, the only time they get off is a, is a Sunday often. And so that it's just, it's allowing them, to, I think, some time to, relax and unwind, I think is, is very important in this uh, day and age. I don't think when we're going to a point whereby there's a lot of lobbying now going for, you know, moving to a four-day-a-week employment um, yeah. uh, proposition. That's a different issue, I accept. So sure. there are people well, that lobby on the religious view. There are it people is, that. as I understand it, Bob, the, the, the theory here is that it wouldn't be for, it wouldn't be a full-time thing. This is a kind of kickstarter for the economy after these businesses have been closed for so long and it would be a way to give us a boost not something well, the, we would do full time my no, problem is that i think along with a lot of these things that are being considered post lockdown if you if you if we can term it that way is that you do something on a temporary basis and that temporary basis continues just you know once you let the genie sure. out of the bottle you, you'll never go back and and where are the government on this at the moment is it is it a suggestion is it about to be given the green light? What is the deal with this? Well, obviously, um, I and many colleagues have written to the Prime Minister saying, you know, we're, we're, we're against this um, and we're prepared to vote against it if it comes to the floor of the House of Commons. 
Uh, and also, I can say that a large number of Conservative MPs in the background who don't want to be named um, are also supportive of of not changing the compromise. Yeah, but would but they vote against it, Rob? Well, uh, uh, there is a very strong. I mean, I have to say, you know, we've seen the uh, the comments from people, and they will they will vote against it if, if it comes to. Uh, um, the floor of the Commons. Why risk it is is my uh, view. There are many other things that we need to get on with in terms of opening up the economy without um, taking this sure. one on. Bob Blackman, thank you, Conservative MP for Harrow East, Executive Secretary of the 1922 Committee against the idea of extending Sunday opening hours. And it's interesting, during the news, Ricky, our producer, just sort of buzzed in my ear and said, I, I can't understand why we even have these Sunday trading laws. And it's, it seems crazy. And I'd never really thought about this before. All I remember as a kid, do you remember how boring a Sunday was as a kid before this stuff opened up? It was a horror show, wasn't it? I mean, literally nothing was open. And I just remember having your Sunday dinner and then going out on your bike. Can I go out now, Mum? And you go out on your bike and you kind of drive around, ride around on your bike looking for somebody else who was out playing. There was nothing to do. And I suppose as a kid, I mean, I'm looking this through you know, the, the sort of romantic glasses, as it were. As a kid, today there wouldn't be that much to do. But your, your parents can take you to do things. Things are open in a very different way, whereas back then, I think, you know, swimming pools were open. You could do that sort of stuff, but you couldn't have really gone shop. You certainly couldn't have gone into town and done any shopping. And, of course, what we've had since then are not just big shopping malls and centres, uh, but also the out-of-town shopping parks, so, you know, where you've got your big Halfords and home base and pets at home, whatever they call called, those, those kind of places. You've got all of that. Um, how would you feel about all that not closing down? Because you know what? Trying to pick out a positive over the lockdown of the last three months. If you had to give a list, an honest list of what you found to be positive about it, for me, it's been the sort of almost tranquility of it. There's been something rather, rather kind of healthy about the fact that you see people going for a walk and there's not loads of cars on the road and you know that not everybody is out and about spending loads of dosh. And for some people, of course, it's a very special day because it's a Christian day and therefore they want to adhere to that as well. And I'm now thinking, I'm revising my, because as a, I promise you, as a kid, I always thought if I was Prime Minister, everything would be open 24-7. I was way ahead of the game. That's how my little brain used to see it. The Americans did everything. There's loads of things the Americans did well. Kids had phones in their rooms. Do you remember that when you watched American TV? They had phones in their rooms that were attached to an incredibly long cable that they could carry around the house with them. Man alive. There was that. They had multi-channel TV and everything was always open on a Sunday. Let's go for a burger. You couldn't do any of that in, in our place. Now I'm kind of seeing the benefits of having a day off. And I also take Bob Blackman's point that actually it's those hours outside the big supermarkets closing where the little stores do rather well. Because anything after four o'clock, your local Tesco or Sainsbury's is closed, so your default place is the convenience store around the corner. That's certainly what I would do. In fact, I did exactly that yesterday. Oh, look, missed it, need some bread. Tesco's is shut. I'll nip round the corner. So I nip round to the local store and bought it there. So perhaps they do, I don't know, a disproportionate amount of business, do they, on those, from what Bob Blackman was saying.